Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ariane. I am a luxury travel advisor based in Vancouver, Canada, and today we are here in Ketchikan. So unfortunately, the clouds did catch up to us. We had such amazing weather here on our Alaska cruise so far, and very typical of Ketchikan, uh, the clouds are here. <laughs> um, Ketchikan is actually known as one of the rainiest places in Alaska, so be sure to bring some layers, um, especially for Ketchikan. Um, it's good to pack a rain jacket. Yeah, it can rain here. It's not supposed to rain today. However, the clouds are kind of dense at the moment, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, really excited to bring you back to Ketchikan. This is my fifth time here. And I think we're just going to walk around Creek Street again as I have my grandmother with me. Um, we're not planning anything too strenuous. So let's see what we get up to today here in Ketchikan. And we are now going down for breakfast. So let's get going. We had breakfast in the Britannia restaurant and I had some croissants with Nutella and for my main course, so to speak, for breakfast, I had an Eggs Benedict, two hash browns and a sausage. Once we arrived into Ketchikan, we disembarked the ship and went for a walk. Cunard Line's Queen Elizabeth had great docking privileges in Ketchikan, very central to the center of town. We made our way over to Creek Street and wandered through the various shops. After wandering Ketchikan for a little while, we decided to head back on board. When you are going back on board, you'll be required to show your cruise card and also photo ID in quite a few of the Alaska ports. It was then time for lunch and I had lunch at the Golden Lion Pub. I came back for the chicken tikka masala and of course the sticky toffee pudding for dessert. I really enjoyed the meals here at the Golden Lion Pub. After lunch, I decided to take a walk around the promenade deck as I hadn't had the chance to do so yet on our sailing. I then checked out a couple more of the public spaces on board, some of which where they were actually doing some puzzles. So here in the alcove, you'll find places where you can quote unquote puzzle 
and they also had more here in the card room. I also got to check out the guest launderette. It unfortunately was closed for most of the cruise. I'm not really sure why it was. However, these guest launderettes that you will find on board Cunard's Queen Elizabeth are completely free of charge to use. You'll also find an iron here so that you can iron your best clothes before gala nights. They also provide the laundry detergent as well. Another of my top tips is to check out guest services and see if they have any postcards on board. I was able to get a few postcards of the Queen Elizabeth, which I'll send out to my Patreon supporters. It was then time for afternoon tea. And yes, they actually serve clotted cream with the scones. As we were preparing to leave Ketchikan, we headed up to the Commodore Club for a better view of Sail Away. We then headed back to our room to get changed and ready for dinner. For dinner tonight, I had the wedge salad followed by the chicken cordon bleu for my main course. For dessert, I had a deconstructed cheesecake which was quite tasty. And today is sadly day seven here on the Cunard Lines Queen Elizabeth. It is our last full day here on board before we disembark in Vancouver tomorrow morning. So kind of sad, it went by really quick. <laughs> We're going to be entering the inside passage between Vancouver Island and uh, the mainland of British Columbia today, which I'm really excited. We were actually scheduled to go on the outside of Vancouver Island on our way back to Vancouver. So this was a very nice surprise that we'll be able to do some scenic cruising this afternoon. Also, it's protected, <laughs> so it's not too rough. We had a little bit of rough seas coming out of Sitka, which wasn't very fun. Yeah, the seas are quite calm this morning, so... Now we're going to go upstairs. I think we're going to try the Lido buffet for breakfast because we actually haven't tried that yet. So we're going to go do that right now and let's see what we get up to today. Let's go. The food options up in the buffet were just okay. I actually preferred eating breakfast down in the main dining room. After a late breakfast, we headed down to the Royal Court Theatre where we were going to be listening to Rachel, the naturalist on board, about her presentation on the humpback whales. Mm -hmm. 
After Rachel's amazing speech on the whales, we headed back up to the Lido where I ordered a pizza from the Lido Pizzeria along with a salad. Much better than my breakfast I had earlier. We then approached Vancouver Island and some of the outer islands. It is such a beautiful and scenic cruise through this area. I highly suggest bringing binoculars with you as you do have a chance to see dolphins, porpoises, and of course, whales. I was then so excited to catch a glimpse of the Seaborne Odyssey. I would be cruising on the Seaborne Encore in just a few short months. It was then time for our last afternoon tea on board Cunard. As we entered Johnson Strait, we saw a whale. Such a relaxing afternoon just enjoying the sights of Johnson Strait as we sailed. We then actually came across some porpoises. There is so much scenery on an Alaska cruise, and again, there are so many opportunities to see whales. As we were enjoying the views up in the Commodore Club, they came around with some canapes, and we sat enjoying as we were going to be going through Seymour Narrows. dinner I had the plum tomato mozzarella and pesto salad followed by the spinach and ricotta cannelloni which unfortunately I actually didn't like and I had the salted caramel ice cream for dessert as we were eating our dinner there was a beautiful sunset after dinner we went back up to our stateroom to unfortunately start packing and enjoy the last bit of our balcony before leaving tomorrow morning. So I am back in our room. We just finished dinner. We came back and we packed and we just put all of our luggage outside to be picked up for tomorrow morning. We depart the ship. It's always a sad day. Disembarkation is always a sad day. Um, we had a great cruise on board. There were a few things that I will say if I'm going to be honest were a little bit um, probably not as usual um, or typical of a 
crews here on Cunard. They were running at half capacity as they do have a bit of a staff shortage at the time that I sailed. And this was uh, again, June 24th to July 1st in 2022. But I'm going to call it a night. Today, unfortunately, we are leaving Cunard Lines Queen Elizabeth this morning. It was a, overall, it was a really good cruise. Um, there were a few things that I do want to talk about once we get back to my um, apartment. But yeah, there's, I'm just, it's, it's always a sad day when the cruise is over. <laughs> So I am now going to, obviously we did check, we did pack and we left our bags out by 11 o'clock last night as that's when our deadline for baggage to be outside for to be delivered uh, port side was. Uh, so we are purple one. So we are now going to go down for breakfast. Uh, it's about 730 in the morning here in Vancouver. And uh, so we're going to go shortly down for breakfast so that our room steward can start getting this room flipped over for the next passengers. There were a couple things that I will talk about um, that I wasn't personally expecting as this was my first cruise on Cunard. And just a couple of things that I enjoyed and a couple of things that I was a bit disappointed with. So let's go down for breakfast and see what our disembarkation is like. Let's go. So as you can see, I am now back home and I am ready to tackle some of your questions that I asked through Instagram and also on YouTube as to what you'd like me to answer about my cruise on Cunard Lines Queen Elizabeth to Alaska. And I'll kind of also give you some of my thoughts if I will be sailing with Cunard Line in the future and just kind of what I thought about the cruise overall. So let's get right into it. So the first question was about what was the dress like on board? So Alaska does tend to be a little bit more country club casual. This goes for any cruise that I've ever done to Alaska. I will actually be posting in a couple months my ultimate Alaska cruise guide. So be sure that you're subscribed because I will be posting that on some packing tips and what the various cruise lines uh, kind of suggest for their dress code. Now with Cunard Line, they are a little bit more of a traditional cruise line. <laughs> so they did have two gala nights on our sailing. We were told ahead of time what the attire was to be. Uh, Cunard does do a pretty good job of that. So we had our first gala night was called the Icy White Gala Night. And uh, that was, you were supposed to be wearing attire that was reminiscent of the colors you would see in the glaciers. Uh, so I did bring like a steel blue, smoky blue dress, and that's what I personally wore. There were lots of people wearing white and silver. And so yeah, it was a really nice first. Uh, most people were wearing uh, gala attire. Our second gala night was actually called the Roaring Twenties. So again, guests were encouraged to dress up in 1920s attire, uh, which quite a few people did. And it was kind of fun to see all the different costumes. I will say though that they were very strict on the dress codes. So unfortunately we did bump into somebody who forgot a tie and was not allowed to eat in the regular dining room during gala night because he did not have a tie. So keep that in mind that Cunard, they are a more traditional lines. So they do have dress 
dress codes in place. You can find the dress codes very easily on their website. I have put a link in the description box below. How is it for someone who's vegetarian or vegan? So one of my colleagues that I actually work with, she was on board. Uh, she is actually vegetarian slash she tries to be vegan, but sometimes it's hard for her. She didn't find the options to be very good. <laughs> there were options available for her, but she said that they were just very boring. So with more and more people having alternative choices, I am surprised that Cunard line hasn't really stepped up to the plate because they are owned by Carnival Corporation, which Holland America and some of these other cruise lines actually do vegan food on board their ships very well. So hopefully this will be a change that comes to Cunard in the future. So they do have vegetarian options. However, they have very limited vegetarian and vegan options. So now let's talk about what I did like on board Cunard Lines Queen Elizabeth. I really like the fact that when we left Vancouver, it was a narrated experience. I'd never seen that before and I'd cruised from Vancouver quite a few times. So I thought that for someone who, who comes to Vancouver and this is their first cruise to Alaska or their first time to Vancouver, I thought that that was really interesting that Cunard Line does give a bit of a narration as we left Vancouver, which again, I thought was a great idea. The speakers on board I found were fascinating. We had Kenton Cool on board. He had just summited Mount Everest for the 16th time just a couple months before he was on board our ship giving his talks. He gave two on board. Uh, so the enrichment talks that they do have on Cunard Line, I will say they're very high quality speakers. I also enjoyed the uh, naturalist on board. Her name was Rachel. One of her uh, talks on the whales and it was really interesting to see some of what she has been uh, involved with the research of humpback whales in Maui and then follows them up to Alaska. The afternoon tea. So the afternoon tea is definitely quite an experience. <laughs> I will say it's definitely one of the best afternoon teas I have done thus far on a cruise ship. Uh, it's very formal and uh, all the different scones available and sandwiches and desserts. It's just very well done. It is every day on your cruise at three o'clock in the afternoon and it's something definitely not to be missed. Even my grandmother really enjoyed afternoon tea. If you're into dancing, you will love Cunard. They have so many different activities in regards to dancing. They have different dance classes. We saw a line dancing class in the mornings obviously happening. Also had different ballroom classes. Now, because this was during COVID, uh, they were just introducing the dance host the following week. So that is something that Cunard has now reintroduced to their cruise ships, is that if you are traveling on Cunard solo, they do have the dance hosts available on board now. Interesting to note that the Queen Mary II and the brand new upcoming Queen Anne actually have sprung dance floors. So if that, if dancing, like I said, is really of interest, to you. Uh, Cunard ships definitely have a great dancing program. So now let's talk about a few things that unfortunately I didn't like with Cunard. Starting with the single-use plastics on board. I will be very honest and it's something that actually kind of broke my heart. Firstly, when we received our order for room service, uh, everything was wrapped in saran wrap, even the coffee, which I found to be very interesting. And obviously my first thought, why is everything wrapped in saran wrap? This makes no sense. Cunard is obviously owned by the Carnival Corporation and I had just cruised with Holland America very shortly before this cruise. So I was actually kind of in my mind somewhat comparing Cunard Line to Holland America because Cunard Line is supposed to be a premium line in the Carnival Corporation family of brands, so to speak. To see that Holland America actually took quite a bit of 
uh, care in doing so. They don't have any single-use plastics on board whatsoever anymore. And I just was very surprised to see that saran wrap was delivered to my stateroom. Uh, we did try this twice. Again, both times uh, our juice glasses came wrapped in saran wrap. They didn't have just like a juice container that you would pour out your juice in like they did on Hall in America. And then also our coffee carafe was just totally wrapped up in saran wrap as well. So again, we didn't order room service after the third day because we just found it to be wasteful. The other thing I would say is we found uh, during our turndown service on our first night, they gave us plastic ponchos, which again, I'm not really sure what Cunard was thinking. Alaska really doesn't want plastic single-use ponchos invading their state either. Um, so again, just I was very confused by some of the things that Cunard was doing and it was just very wasteful. So Cunard, you can do better. I also didn't like the water glasses that they use on board. I do drink a lot of water on a cruise. I Obviously, I try to get my steps in every day, so when I sit down to a meal, I do like to have a proper water glass. During the day, you always had to ask for a water glass. Even at breakfast, I had to actually ask to have a water glass because they weren't set with water glasses. In a lot of the restaurants, such as the Golden Lion Pub, and even up in the Lido Buffet restaurant area, they were very, very small water glasses that they would give you. It almost felt like you were taking a shot of water. And because they were unfortunately short-staffed, it was very frustrating that when you were finished your glass of water, you needed more water, there was never anyone around to fill up your water glass. So I even asked for a pint glass of water at one point in the pub, and they actually didn't even serve me that. So again, something else that I just wasn't a fan of with Cunard. This brings me into my next topic. The restaurants and the service was a little bit hit and miss on my cruise. As I mentioned in other episodes and in this episode earlier, we were only at 50% capacity for this specific sailing. Unfortunately, Cunard was having some staffing issues at this time, and that was just the reality of this specific cruise. They were at 50% capacity because they had reduced staff. Now, that being said, I felt that by not having an open seating, um, it really kind of put a lot more pressure on the dining room unnecessarily because people were feeling quite rushed if you were early dining and of course we were stuck with late dining and unfortunately for my 87 year old grandmother uh, she really didn't have a great time in that regard because uh, she doesn't like to eat and then go to bed right away and even for myself I do actually like to eat earlier than 8 o'clock at night uh, because I do tend to go to bed earlier and I like to wake up early. So I do really feel like Cunard needs to break some of their traditions and adopt, such as other cruise lines have, a more open dining policy so that people, if they aren't able to have early dining, they're not stuck with late dining if they're in, such as my grandmother's uh, situation, where they're just older and they really can't eat uh, later. Again, I will say that the food on Cunard was very hit and miss. I'm not sure if that was due to the staff shortages that they were experiencing and that did affect the kitchen. I will say that the food portion sizes were kind of all over the place. Some, some portion sizes were the perfect size. I prefer a smaller portion size but then other other courses felt very large and just way too much food and I really don't like wasting food but several times I actually had to uh, leave things on my plate which I really don't like to do but I couldn't eat everything. Also there were quite a few things. It is a very traditional menu as I kind of mentioned earlier. I found that the food was very heavy and not uh, there weren't too many lighter options, so to speak. did have some meals where I took a couple bites and I actually just didn't like the meal. And 
I, I have not been on a cruise line for a long time that that's actually happened to me. Sometimes the food was quite bland, other times the food was overly salted. And please, don't get me wrong, there were some meals that I really did enjoy. However, I'm just being very transparent that during my sailing with Cunard Line, unfortunately, there were just a few lapses in regards to that. So will I try Cunard Line again in the future? Yes, <laughs> I will. The reason I think I will is because this was my sixth cruise in a matter of 12 months. I do understand that, you know, everybody is restarting. Cruise lines are trying their best right now. So I do want to try Cunard again. Like I said, I understand that they were under 50% capacity limitations because of their staffing on board. Also, there were, there were some activities that I really wanted to do that just weren't on this sailing. So for instance, Cunard actually offers fencing classes on board. They're actually going to start two weeks from now, so unfortunately I didn't get to try it. I'll just have to try another Cunard cruise in the future to try my fencing classes. I am very excited to hopefully try the Queen Anne in the future. She looks like a beautiful ship and is very reminiscent to the Koningsdam that I was just on. She's going to be a whole different experience. So I will try Cunard Line again in the future. I do hope that Cunard does do some changes in regards to their single-use plastics on board and also the food and they think about the dining experience overall because I am young. I totally understand that, but I am the future when it comes to cruisers. And I do believe that my generation, we want a little bit more flexibility in what we are looking for when it comes to dining options. So I do hope that Cunard takes a couple of these suggestions to heart and that we'll see some changes with them in the future. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this Queen Elizabeth series on Cunard Line. And if you do have any questions about anything that you saw in this series, please leave them in the comments box down below. I do try my best to answer all the questions and comments. My next big series that I am going to be launching is actually going to be on, uh, it's a pretty big trip that I've got planned for France, Greece, and also Turkey. So be sure you're subscribed because that will be starting up in a couple episodes. So again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And as I mentioned, hit that subscribe button down below as there are lots of travel videos coming up on my channel. Take care. Bye.